Starting out the conceptual sphere, I just get a reasonable sized, sort of hopefully more spherical than oval shape on the page. Um, and also it's important to then kind of start to establish where the, um, where the light source is gonna be coming from and therefore where the cast shadow is gonna be as um, both of these aspects uh, are kind of pivotal in what we're going to experience and talk about um, as the, uh, the progress of this kind of continues, right? <clears throat> so these are two kind of basic shapes. We want to consider this the uh, block-in phase. Um, I should also mention, like, while you're doing these conceptual spheres, um, you know, it's not a, really about perfection so much as it is like maybe um, just an exercise that can assist you in, uh, you know, sort of sharpening a little bit your skills in certain areas, but also um, it's a way to uh, experience the worlds of light and shadow in a more kind of controlled environment that's a lot more simplistic than you would experience in say your typical portrait where we have the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the hair, etc. Um, all uh, with their, their complication, all sort of standing in the way of us focusing on a very simple idea like, you know, how to illustrate light and shadow. So, um, from there I'm gonna start by uh, kind of defining the, uh, the shadow edge or the form shadow edge. Um, and this is related to a light source that's basically gonna be uh, coming from the sort of upper left, uh, or sorry, rather upper right hand corner of the, um, of the picture plane, right? So this is our little sort of arrow kind of showing us where the light is kind of coming in from. And people will sort of render these to varying degrees of complexity. Um, I'm just going to leave that one as it is. We have our form shadow and we have a cast shadow. So, uh, without really kind of going much further into, um, kind of defining, uh, the shape of this or the specificity of the shape of it, I'm going to start to, um, I'm going to start to kind of block in the shadow. Uh, important to remember here are kind of two terms, right? The form shadow edge and the cast shadow edge, right? So if you consider that we have light hitting this form and we have these various planes, right, um, that are traveling across it, we have this plane here uh, facing uh, most directly the light source. Um, and I like to consider that this is maybe uh, receiving about 100% of the potential light from that light source and diminishing onwards until we get to 50% and maybe till a point um, just here along the edge of the light shape where maybe we have 1% of the uh, available light from that light source still hitting the form. Here we are still within the light shape um, and then uh, we have reached this sort of form shadow edge which you'll hear variously described as a terminator or a um, uh, bed bug line. There's so many different um, uh, terms out there to define it. Um, I just use the term core shadow. Um, and what this is really kind of referring to is that uh, in all of these sort of planes that are descending away from the light source, um, you have a situation where uh, even though we have a strong kind of primary dominant light source, you're going to have kind of secondary or like kind of ambient light sources that are going to come in and hit the subsequent planes of this form, uh, thus making them a little bit lighter. What you'll have in between those two then is a plane that is facing more or less kind of parallel to this light source and parallel to other secondary sources uh, that will achieve a little bit of a darker value than what you'll have on either side of it. Um, for our purposes, this, um, this core shadow edge uh, is something where we're not really going to consider the secondary sources afterwards. Um, what we're chasing for the most part is a way to kind of isolate these two worlds of light and shadow. Um, if you've watched some other videos or live streams with me, um, you've probably heard me use the, the phrase shadow is atmosphere and light is form, right? And this is something that is kind of kicked around the uh, Florence Academy for as long as I ever went there and uh, for probably many years before that. Um, but what we're saying basically is that 
we are going to, uh, in order to achieve like a good impression of light and shadow, um, we're actually going to, um, we're going to darken uh, or rather unify the shadows further than what your eye will immediately tell you. It's going to give the form and, and the space, the impression of uh, maybe what it would look like if we were squinting down a little bit, right? So decreasing or diminishing the amount of light uh, that comes into our eye. Squinting down will have a tendency to unify together the shadow values. So this is kind of the first phase of development in this uh, in this section of the, the drawing. Now, I may or may not kind of talk throughout the entire process of this, um, just because uh, maybe there's more work to be done than thoughts to be expressed. But uh, I will kind of continue speaking later on. So if you're watching this and I kind of go quiet for a little while, it's not because I'm never going to say anything again. It's only because I've just got to get some labor done on the drawing before I can kind of continue talking about some ideas. So I wanted to talk a little bit at this stage of it about the conception of the light shape, the light area in a drawing. Um, what I think we're probably conditioned to see more often than not is to look a lot at a highlight. Like think of the highlight on the tip of someone's nose or the highlight on the cheekbone or the highlight on the forehead. Um, this is something that we are drawn to. It tends to be the lightest light in the, in the subject. Um, and I'm going to attempt to show or, or tell you why it's important not to ignore that, but to maybe not treat it as the, um, the sort of principal attraction in the, the light source or in the, the, the light shape. Um, when we think about the surface of skin, um, it is a modulated surface. It has uh, different local colors to it, generally different local values. Uh, rosy cheeks will be a little bit darker than a, a pale forehead. Um, just like a nose with, uh, with um, capillaries closer to the surface will appear a little bit darker than um, maybe the sort of sallow area below the, the eyes. Um, these are all things that uh, we kind of search for and find very easily within the light shape. Um, but we also want to consider that the, the surface of skin is for the most part not deeply reflective. It can be if you know the skin is quite oily, it can be a bit shiny, sure. Um, but if you consider like in the grand spectrum of shiny reflective things, if you think about uh, the skin of the face and say a chrome bumper on a car, or uh, I don't know, a shiny silver figurine, um, you can see that skin will not want to appear the same as some of these reflective surfaces. Um, it's less flattering, let's say. Or also it's, it's less real. Um, in any event, um, what I want to get through with this is that I don't tend to actually key directly to the highlight. Um, the way that I kind of conceive of this in relationship to what I'm seeing is uh, actually a kind of photographic idea. Uh, if you've ever seen amateur photography of like a, an evening sort of cafe scene, right? Where somebody's maybe taking a, a selfie or uh, taking a picture of their friend across the table. And um, behind that person, you will see uh, some lamp in the distance. Now, the actual size of the light bulb of that lamp might be uh, something this size um, in the actual photograph. But what you see is this orb of light around it. Now, what the camera is doing in that instance is uh, it is keying the picture in such a way that you're able to see 
um, the, the forms, the volumes of your friend's face, um, it is opening up the aperture, uh, which has a tendency then to allow this light bulb to actually bleach out the area around it. So what your camera is saying is that light bulb is so bright that it's actually bleaching out the area around it. We can't even see the information around that because it's so bright. What I tend to do with highlights is not dissimilar from that. I, I tend to treat the highlight as something so bright that it tends to bleach out a little bit the area around it. Now, we could discuss for a long time how uh, real or artificial this conception is, um, but it is the one that I work with. And so uh, I also, by the way, you know, came to this realization from studying sculpture for many years, plaster casts, and also studying portraiture um, just with, uh, with live models. Um, so it's effect, an effect that I feel definitely is derived from nature, um, but also one that heightens a little bit uh, the beauty of the appearance of nature, right? So this is my sort of background on that idea. And that's how I tend to conceive of light shapes. So with this one, I actually won't um, use halftone value all the way up to the highlight of the form um, uh, in order to kind of achieve that sort of brilliance or brightness of, uh, of light effect. I tend to allow the light shape to be a little bit bleached out. Um, and you can see that probably in a lot of my uh, drawings is they don't actually go up to the highlight itself. Um, so this is effectively where this sphere exercise ends up. Um, hopefully we have gotten to a place where we have a nice even value. We have a shadow shape that does not have any sort of harsh or sharp edges inside of it that would draw attention, that all of the attention and focus of the picture should be left here within the light shape where we also have our darkest, strongest, sharpest, most contrasting edge. Um, our shadow edge, our, our form shadow edge such as, such as it is, uh, is unified, it is consistent, um, and it sets a boundary in the gradation um, that shows us the sort of distinction in between these two worlds, the world of shadow and the world of light. We have some ambient reflective light from this bright plane down here, um, but it, when we squint down, this is definitely a part of the world of shadow rather than the world of light. So. These are some of the ideas that I think we can we can think about and reflect on and practice. And I would really uh, um, implore you to, when you're watching the videos that I make, search for the ideas that I've talked about here. Look at the way that I'm handling a shadow or a shadow edge um, and, and think of this as a kind of a, a microcosm or a kind of a controlled environment in which uh, we can work on and express some of these ideas without being confronted by the, the difficulty of actually rendering features.